Hello everybody. Today I would like to present you a format for holding a conference event, which is called Conversations, which I have learned some years ago, actually many years ago, from a conference which was called ICT for Sustainability, and which I'm trying to promote and to use more because I really believe it is a much better and more modern format for holding a conference than just these boring stand-up conferences which we currently have. So if we look on uh, what are the problems currently, like if anybody who has been on a conference event recently will probably agree with me that um, what happens is that the audience is sitting in a large room, pretty spread around because the room is typically much bigger than uh, the participants are actually counting. Um, there is somebody in front who is working himself or herself through their slides and most of the people are just mailing, even phoning or just sleeping. It is terrible. And at the end of the presentation, there are a couple of questions. Sometimes they're actually pretty good if there is interested audience uh, in the room, but sometimes they just slept over it and they ask almost nothing or they ask some completely trivial questions. And at the same time, uh, as conference organizers, we're actually putting a lot of pressure on our presenters to say, you have to stay exactly in your 15 minutes, you have exactly 12 minutes for your talk and then three minutes for questions and nothing more. And this is terrible, this is so frustrating. You, you, you traveled maybe a long time to present your work and then you get 12 minutes to present your work. This is really terrible. And so the whole thing boils also down that you as a presenter get very little feedback about your work. And you sometimes even ask yourself, was it really worth coming to this conference? Or could I have just published it uh, somewhere else, maybe in a journal, maybe, maybe in a smaller online conference, where was actually the point of going there? Let us see now what is actually conversation. So the idea of conversations is to solve exactly this time and feedback problem. So a conversation, the word itself comes from conversations and stations. So it develops into a conversation. And the idea is that to have more time to talk, that you have only the interested audience in your room or your presentation space, I would call it now. And that at the end, you get much more feedback. How do we do that? We do that by consolidating the interested people on tables. So a table can be really small. It can be four, five, six people, maybe 10 at the most. And we also repeat the presentation. So as a presenter, you will not only do it once, but you do it tw twice or even three times. And you will get every time optimally completely different audience. So your discussion will go also in completely different directions. And because the audience is so small and they're sitting on a round table where you can see them directly like this, they feel a little bit more obliged to actually listen and to participate and they tend to read less emails and play less with their smartphones. So what do you need in order to organize this, this part? It is a little bit scary in the beginning and the first time you do it, you go like, why did I do it right or not? And especially explaining it actually to your participants can be a little bit tricky, but it is definitely worth it, believe me. So what you need actually is, first of all, for the conference venue itself, you need a conference room, a flat room, where you can put different tables with some chairs around them. Uh, they don't have to be in different rooms. It's actually better to have them in the same room so that people keep also a little bit kind of um, uh, organized and they know where to go next. Um, you need also obviously the tables and the chairs. You also need some poster stands and sticky notes to organize the schedules themselves. We'll come that, uh, to that later. And you need, of course, information about how many participants you have and how many talks you have or how many presenters you have. And you need a little bit of simple math. I would say third grade will do perfect. So here I have tr tried to calculate kind of to show you two, two examples. Let's go one by one. Okay, don't get scared about this table first. Let's see in the first row, number of talks. Let's assume we have a relatively small event so that the numbers stay kind of manageable and small. 
let's say you have only six talks, okay? It's a small workshop. Um, you have a total of participants, including the presenters, are only 23, okay? 23 is a kind of an odd number, which is typical for a real event. Now you have to decide how many repetitions you would like to have per talk. We said that this is one of the really killing arguments for the conversations, that you don't have one chance to present your work, but you get several. Less than two absolutely doesn't make sense. That develops into a simple parallel sessions track kind of conference. So you need at least two repetitions per talk. I would advise you to have two or three if you have the time. Four is already a little bit too much and a little bit difficult for the presenters. And it's, it's, a, lot of, it's a lot of time at the end uh, also. You now have to decide also on the duration of one talk. The duration, you can actually now afford for a longer duration. Stop doing it 15 or 20 minutes. Give the people the possibility to actually go and discuss in details. If they don't meet all of the time, they will go apart, go drink a coffee together. This is just perfect. Give them time. So try at least in the beginning to give them 40 minutes for discussing and for the presentations themselves, and then five minutes to actually switch between one on the other presentation. You need uh, also to now to decide on number of tables. This is your first decision, which you need to do here. Everything else before that, it's kind of, I would say, you just try it out and then you can adjust it on the go if you're not happy with the results. Let's say that you decide for three tables. What does that mean actually? So imagine you have a relatively big room, you have your 23 participants and you decide for exactly three tables. That would mean that uh, the chairs per table, including the presenters, so that will be 23 divided by three. So you will have approximately seven chairs per table. I would definitely advise you to round it down. People tend to say, oh, but we need more chairs so that everybody fits. Not everybody is always interested in everything. Keep that in mind. So it is better to downgrade a little bit and to downscale the number of chairs instead of going up and allowing for empty chairs, which is could be very demotivating for a presenter. Go a little bit down if somebody is really wanting to join a table which doesn't have chairs left, they will drag a chair, believe me. Okay, so for example, if we have the number of chairs, if we decide for three tables, we will have approximately seven chairs. We will have seven chairs per table where one of these chairs will be always occupied by the presenter and the other six are free for participants to join. If you decide for more tables, let's say for four tables, obviously you will have less number of chairs per table. In this case, you will have, let's say, five, okay? And this is actually a pretty good scenario. So having only five chairs per table means one is presenting, four are listening. And this is actually very, very good because they can go really deeply. However, you need to assume that also people are really focused and that there are enough people to really work deeply on that topic. So if it's a more general style conference, this might be not what you want because you would assume that people need a lot of time first to figure out what they're, what's happening. But if you have a small workshop or a kind of an internal retreat or uh, only PhD students like a PhD panel or so or, or a poster session otherwise, that could be actually very, very nice and people will go and discuss very deeply in that 40 minutes. Okay, um, how many sessions would you need? Obviously, you will need to do it several times because otherwise in one just one session, you obviously can accommodate only three talks, so the three tables. So you have to repeat it. Let's see how to do that. This is just the number of talks you have multiplied by the number of repetitions you would like to have. So in this case, we assume two divided by the number of tables. It's so simple and hopefully it all divides. If not, you play with the, we, you, we can play a little bit with the numbers. Or you can simply say, I need, I, this time I will round up the session so that the last session maybe, or, or one in the, in, the, in, the, in the middle, will have less tables occupied. This is perfectly fine. 
And so in this case, let's say we have six talks, we decided for two repetitions, so we have a total of 12 talks which we need to accommodate. We divide them by the number of tables, which is, for example, three, and we get four sessions out. If you divide it by number of tables four, it will be obviously three sessions. Now let's look a little bit into this time perspective. I promise to you that we will save time. Right. So if we have a total, for example, if we have only four sessions, each sec ses session, sorry, uh, we assume it will be 45 minutes. So four times 45 minutes is 180 minutes. This is without the breaks, but this is actually something which you can do pretty well. You can put maybe a 10 break in between between two sessions and two sessions and you're good to go. If you try to do that in a classical way, for example, just the number of talks one after another with exactly the same timing, you will get six times 45 minutes, which is already longer than what we have. And people will not get a single repetition. So don't forget that actually a presenter from a conversation and only two repetitions gets the double feedback compared to a stand up talk in the whole audience or in parallel sessions that doesn't matter because a parallel session also assumes only one repetition of a talk if you go for more tables you even save more time you make it more focused and you will go only for 35 minutes uh, 135 minutes instead of the 270 minutes and you will have two repetitions now you can start playing with these numbers around to see what fits you and what you like more or less. It is perfectly fine the first time you organize maybe that to start with a kind of a more traditional, traditional setup or to say only two repetitions. And I would like to have a little bit bigger tables, maybe even to book small rooms and make it kind of a more presentation style. This is OK, but take care that people get at least two repetitions and you need to go for at least three rooms so that it starts getting uh, getting useful. OK, and once you start playing with these numbers, you will also figure it out that in some situations, of course, these numbers don't work out very well. And in some cases, it might be, of course, also not what you wanted. But you can try to use this idea of having repetitions and change it according to your requirements. Let us now see how we actually organize that for the participants, because for them, it's still completely unclear what to do. What we do is to present or to prepare a poster stand, which in this case, for example, you can put one big poster stand for each of the sessions you're planning. What I like doing is to say each session gets a color. This is very useful for people because they get colors are something which they can work with. Maybe you should take care a little bit about for colorblind people to, for example, green and red, you should be maybe a little bit more careful, but you can also use also gray or white and so on. The red session is, let's say, the very first session in your conference. And you decided that uh, you have three tables, right? Table A, table B, table C. You have your uh, talks, which we have them here on the right, presentations. They're called Title One, Title Two, Title Three, and so on. So nothing really interesting. And then what you can do is to prepare stickets. You can print them, but you can also make them by hand. That's perfectly fine. And to say for each table. In this case, we decided for six chairs. This is just an example. One of them is occupied by the presenter, don't forget that, and that the presenter is there by default, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. So you have actually exactly five chairs to give away and to distribute. So you say, OK, for table A, I have five sticky notes for table A and the red session. You do that for you put title two to table B, title three goes to table C that easy it goes typically. Sometimes you have to play a little bit around, but typically it actually goes pretty straightforward. In the blue session, it looks almost exactly the same. So the blue session is, however, already the third one. So if we look into the green one, which is the second session, you see that we continue there. Title four, title five, title six. So every time I would like, for example, to make, and you leave those tickets, they should be really physical tickets don't get uh, tempted to do that digitally because that actually doesn't work very well. 
uh, if you get it working at all and put the stance there and you say, guys, look into your programs, decide which titles you would like really, which presentations you would like to see, go and take your sticky notes. And there is only one rule for that. Don't repeat a color. You can repeat a title if you're so super interested that you would like to hear it twice. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but you can do it. What you definitely cannot do is uh, to have to be on two different tables at the same time. So taking two red stickers doesn't work, but you can take uh, one red, one green, one yellow and one blue. Let us see a small example where I decided that, OK, my schedule, for example, could be that. I took from session from the red session, title one. I took from the green session, title six. I took from the blue one, title two, and from the yellow one, I took title five. All the titles are different. All the colors, the sessions are different. So I'm actually good to go. One thing to remember is that, yes, I could not cover all six titles. This is true. I'm not doing that. So I decided that title one, two, five, and six are the ones which I'm mostly interested in and title two and three are either out of my interest or maybe I know the work. For example, this is my own PhD student. So I don't really have to go and disturb actually the conversation. This is how it works. There are now a couple of questions which you can try to answer maybe in your own team when you're, when you're organizing that. So one of the questions, for example, is what happens if I redecide? Well, go and bring your sticker back. So whenever, if somebody didn't get a sticker for something they were interested in, they can check it out and see whether there is another sticker available now. Um, if you're not interested in, if, if, you, if you couldn't get the stickers you would like, well, go and ask other people whether they would like maybe to exchange some stickers with you. So it is, the whole thing is that it becomes the conference before even it starts. People start talking to each other. They start organizing on the posters. They have this very manual. This is this very hands-on experience of making their own schedule. And all of these things actually contribute to the fact that they're much more interested later to actually follow the conversation. In that meaning, there is much more information on my blog, which will also put into the comments of this video. And there is also a publication which uh, will be very soonish published on ACM, which I again presented a little bit uh, about that. So I'm very happy also to take your questions either here in the comments or by email, just contact me and uh, happy conferencing. Thank you.